Welcome back to our science class. Today we are going to learn about new chapter that is transportation and excretion. Children, open your textbook at page number 151 that is chapter number 11 transportation and excretion. Clear? Shall we start the topic? Yes. This chapter is about transportation and excretion. In short, you are going to learn about how some substances will get in and out of our system or body. So, let us learn about that in detail. Children, if you notice in our surroundings always there exists a change of state either it might be a travel from one place to another place or else an empty glass can be filled with 100 ml of water so there is a change of state this is happening very frequently in our surroundings is it not Yes, now this topic is about transportation and excretion, transportation. So how and each and every substances like water, blood, minerals, everything is getting transported from one place to another place and how it is excreted in humans and animals that we are going to learn about detail in this chapter. Yes children, now let us learn about the mind map for this chapter, transportation and excretion. So it is further classified into first type that is circulatory system. So what do you mean by circulatory system? transport a transport system which is used to carry materials such as carbon dioxide oxygen and nutrients to different parts of body okay so a transport system which is used to carry materials like carbon dioxide oxygen and nutrients to different parts of the body the whole system is meant to be here as circulatory system clear children yes now the second part of this chapter that is excretion excretion so what do you mean by excretion the process of removal of metabolic waste from the body okay so the process of removal of metabolic waste from the body is said to be as excretion so we are going to learn about excretion in animals and humans clear children yes along with that we are also going to learn about transpiration and then transportation of water and minerals transportation of food okay and then here also we are going to learn about types of blood cells that is red blood cells white blood cells and platelets and then the blood vessels and then the human heart clear yes now let us learn about this chapter yes children now let us learn about transportation and excretion so what is this in unicellular organism like amoeba and paramecium here all the vital functions are performed through a single cell that's why it is said to be a single cellular organism is it not so all the vital functions are performed by single cell the transportation of material takes place through diffusion what diffusion what do you mean by diffusion spreading okay through diffusion within single cell so there is no special transportation present in this organism 
which organism single cellular organism or unicellular organism clear so this is what about unicellular organism next thing is about circulatory system circulatory system in humans so what do you mean by the circulatory system in humans a transport system is used to carry materials what materials carbon dioxide oxygen and nutrients and all okay so these materials are transported to different parts of the body okay and this transport system together all together is meant to be as circulatory system clear children yes so what is getting transported or what is moved from one place to another place transportation of nutrients transportation of respiratory gases removal of waste products okay so all these things are transported from one place to another place in human clear so uh, that's what that's what about transportation then this system that is circulatory system consists mainly of three different components how much three different components so what are the components blood heart and blood vessels blood heart and blood vessels clear so let us learn one by one first about blood first about blood so what do you mean by this it is red color liquid which circulates throughout our body is it not it's present from a head to toe so it's a red color liquid which circulates throughout the body then it mainly has two components it have two components what are they fluid component and solid component fluid or liquid component or solid component clear so what do you mean by this fluid component it is nothing but the blood plasma clear and solid component is also said to be as corpuscles blood corpuscles cells or blood cells either blood corpuscles or blood cells clear so about blood plasma blood plasma what do you mean by this it is a colorless liquid basically it is a colorless liquid okay so out of 100 percentage 90 percentage of this is nothing but the water it is nothing but the water what is this blood plasma it is the fluid component is it not it's a liquid component so out of this liquid component 100 percentage 90 percentage of the thing is nothing but the water clear and 10 percent 10 percent is minerals 10 percent out of that is minerals so what are the different minerals sodium potassium and calcium clear sodium potassium and calcium then dissolve food waste food waste products and then some proteins okay so all these are getting they all these are present in this 10 percentage okay then this blood plasma carries water and dissolve substances carries water and dissolve substances from a one part of the body to another part of the body clear from one part to another part so basically there are three different types of blood cell how many three different types of blood cell so what are they rbc or red blood cells second one is wbc that is white blood cells and the third one is platelet clear so let us learn about that yes children now let us learn about the different types of blood cells okay so the first type that is rbc so what is this rbc red blood cells okay then they are red in color they are red in color and they have red pigments okay it has red 
pigment what is that pigment said to be as hemoglobin okay and then when this hemoglobin combines with oxygen it's said to be as oxyhemoglobin oxyhemoglobin okay so when oxyhemoglobin reaches cells oxygen separates from hemoglobin and diffuses into the cell to be used by it what happens oxygen combined with hemoglobin is said to be as oxyhemoglobin and when this oxyhemoglobin reaches a cell oxygen is separated and that is utilized by the cell clear children yes then rbcs are produced in our bone marrow where they are produced in our bone marrow clear next thing is about white blood cells what is that white blood cells or wbc okay so about wbc wbcs are colorless cell how about they they are basically colorless okay they are colorless cells they help our body to fight diseases okay to fight diseases and infection to fight against diseases and infection hence they increase in number hence they increase in number to protect our body they are getting increased okay then when a person suffer from illness if he is not feeling well suffer from illness wbc can eat up the germs such as bacteria that cause diseases so if he is not if he or she if they are not feeling well automatically that white blood cells will eat up the bacteria or germs so that he or she will get rid of the disease clear so that's what about wbc or white blood cell next thing is about platelets what is that platelets okay so platelets platelets are smallest blood cells present inside the body so basically smallest blood cells present inside the body clear then blood stops coming out out of the wounds after few minutes and that is because of the presence of this platelets so it stops coming out after few minutes only because of the presence of platelets then thus platelets prevent blood loss clear then it transport what and all they will do it transport digested food it transports the digested food from where to where from small intestine to different parts of the body to different parts of the body then not only food waste products waste products is transported to kidneys for their removal clear then oxygen oxygen is transported to different cells of the body so that we will feel energetic in all the cells so oxygen is getting transported then carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is transported from the cells cells of the body to the lungs to the lungs so in this way some substances are getting transported from one place to another place using this platelets clear then it helps in regulating body temperature apart from transporting it is also helping in regulating the body temperature clear then it protects body from infection it protects body from infection clear so there are different types of cell we learned about rbc wbc and platelets clear children yes now next thing is about blood vessels what do you mean by this the blood in our body flows through a tube or vessels is said to be as blood vessels the blood flows through a tube said to be as blood vessels so let us learn about that yes children now let us learn about three different kinds of blood vessels so what are the three different kinds artery vein and capillary artery veins and capillary so let us learn one by one so what do you mean by this artery 
these blood vessel carry oxygenated blood that is oxygen rich blood is said to be as oxygenated blood so this artery will carry oxygenated blood from the heart from the heart to different parts of the body so it is carried from heart to different parts of the body what it is carrying oxygenated blood clear then the pulmonary artery is an exception as it carries deoxygenated blood so there is an exception said to be as pulmonary artery so what it, what it will do it will carry deoxygenated blood otherwise all the arteries will carry oxygenated blood so the exception is pulmonary artery clear then arteries have thick elastic walls they have thick elastic walls so in which way it is helping here this helps in sustaining the pressure with which the blood is pumped from the heart so when the blood is pumped from the heart it's sustaining the pressure which one the thick elastic wall clear so this is what about artery clear next thing is about vein and the next type of blood vessel is said to be as vein so what is this these blood vessels carry deoxygenated blood what do you mean by deoxygenated they are carbon dioxide rich okay so deoxygenated blood is carried from different parts to the heart from where to where from different parts of the body to the heart which one is carried deoxygenated blood clear then to the uh, to the heart there is an exception here also what is that exception pulmonary vein what is this pulmonary vein what it will do it is the only vein that carry oxygenated blood otherwise all the different types of vein will carry deoxygenated so this pulmonary vein will carry oxygenated blood it will carry oxygenated blood next thing is about capillary third type is a third type of the blood vessel is capillary what is this they are extremely thin blood vessels they are extremely thin blood vessels which connect arteries and veins they are basically thin blood vessels and it is used here to connect artery and vein clear next thing they are responsible for the absorption of oxygen absorption of oxygen and then digested soluble food for the digested soluble food and waste products produced in the body which one is responsible capillary is responsible so this is what about three different kinds of blood vessels what are they artery veins and capillary clear yes next thing is about the human heart very important organ human heart so let us learn about that the human heart is the muscular organ basically it is a muscular organ about the size of fist about the size of fist and weigh around 250 to 350 grams how much it is totally 250 gram to 350 gram in a healthy adult so only it ranges this much grams in weight okay for a healthy adult then what it will do it will pump the blood okay it will pump the blood to all parts of the body to all parts the entire part blood is pumped through the heart then where it is present it is located in the center of chest cavity where it is it's located in the center of chest cavity and it's it is slightly tilted towards the left it's tilted slightly towards the left clear that's what so this is what about heart so let us learn about that yes children 
now let us learn about the internal structure of human heart okay so this is what human heart so basically it's divided into four parts what are the four parts right auricle right ventricle here you can see right auricle and here right ventricle right ventricle clear and other two left auricle and left ventricle left auricle and left ventricle so what are they right auricle right ventricle left auricle and left ventricle clear then here we can see the structure is it not a big structure this is what said to be as aorta aorta clear and then this is what pulmonary artery pulmonary artery as i said this is one exception in artery what it will do it will carry the oxygenator blood clear next thing is about pulmonary vein pulmonary vein so this is also one exception in vein where it carries oxygenated blood clear so this is what then you can see here a septum a septum okay next thing is about here superior vena cava okay here superior vena cava and here down inferior vena cava inferior vena cava clear yes next thing you can see a big valve valve clear so this is what about human heart structure so let us learn about that yes children now let us learn about heart we'll continue about the heart heart is made up of special muscles called cardiac muscles what are they said to be cardiac muscles clear then it beats about heart beats about 60 to 80 times per minute so for one minute 60 to 80 times it will beat then it's divided into four chambers what is that they are separated by a muscular wall skull said to be as septum okay muscular muscular wall said to be as septum and then it is enclosed by a double wall sac called pericardium what is that double wall sac called to be as pericardium the upper two chambers what it has the upper two chambers are called auricle orals it is also said to be as atria okay the singular is atrium clear then the lower two chambers are called ventricles they are called ventricles then the auricles and ventricles of the heart are separated so that the blood flowing in them does not get mixed up once again the four main parts said to be as right auricle and right ventricle left auricle and left ventricle what they are telling here they are separated so that the blood flowing in them in one side that is deoxygenated blood and other side this oxygenated blood so this blood will not mixed up will not get mixed up so they are separated clear children yes left auricle is connected to the left ventricle left auricle is connected to the left ventricle and right auricle is connected to the right ventricle by it is connected by a small opening said to be as wall it's connected by a small opening said to be as wall clear then it will allow 
flow of blood only in one direction it will allow always allow the flow of blood in one direction clear then the right side of the heart has what deoxygenated blood right side of the heart contains deoxygenated blood which is so from where they are getting this deoxygenated blood which is received from all parts of the body from all the parts it's receiving the deoxygenated blood and that is there in the right side of the heart clear children yes it is pump to lungs it is pumped to the lungs what this deoxygenated blood is pumped to the lungs so what will happen there in lungs blood get rid of carbon dioxide deoxygenated blood is nothing but the carbon dioxide rich blood is it not so once it if it is sent to lungs automatically it will get rid of carbon dioxide clear then and takes in oxygen and automatically after entering into lungs carbon dioxide will be taken out from the blood and oxygen will be taken in the blood okay it takes in oxygen from air inhaled into them so they are taking out the air from the lungs we are inhaling the air no that from that from that air oxygen is taken out from the lungs the oxygen rich blood is received by the left side of the heart so from the left side it is receiving the oxygenated blood or oxygen rich blood okay and that is pumped to all parts of the body this oxygen rich blood is pumped to all parts of the body clear children yes yes children now let us learn about the functioning of heart okay so let us recall the parts again so here as i said heart has four main parts four main parts what are they auricle and ventricle right so it has been divided as right auricle right ventricle two and then left auricle and then left ventricle these are the four main classification what are they right auricle right ventricle left auricle and left ventricle right yes next thing next two important parts are pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein okay so what it will do this blue color pulmonary artery will carry deoxygenated blood will carry deoxygenated blood and about pulmonary vein okay what it will do it will carry oxygenated blood okay so let us learn about that about the functioning of the heart functioning of the heart okay so the heart keeps pumping blood to lungs as well as other parts okay it keeps on working is it not the heart beat you can hear, you can hear continuously is it not yes the heart keeps pumping blood what it will do if you are inhaling and exhaling your con contraction and relaxation is been taking place is it not can you feel children yes a contraction and relaxation heart is also doing the same is it not yes the heart keeps pumping blood it will pump the blood to lungs as well as other parts not only to lungs the whole entire body blood is pumped out from the heart to different parts of the body clear then when heart is relaxed so two mechanisms are going on that is contraction and relaxation is it not contraction and relaxation now when heart is relaxed the right auricle receives deoxygenated blood so when it is getting relaxed the heart is getting relaxed 
automatically the right auricle where it is here is it not the upper part on the right side that is right auricle this will receive deoxygenated blood what is this deoxygenated blood when carbon dioxide is more then that blood is said to be as deoxygenated blood so when the heart is relaxed the right auricle receives deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body okay different parts of the body so through through which they are just receiving the deoxygenated blood through vein where is this vein you can see here pulmonary vein is it not there are so many veins here pulmonary vein is an exception listen uh, so here deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body through vein it reaches the heart in the right auricle so what we learn here this heart when it is getting relaxed when it is getting relaxed the right auricle will receive deoxygenated blood it will receive deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body through veins it is just transferring the deoxygenated blood clear yes next point the deoxygenated blood is pumped out from right ventricle now deoxygenated blood is in the right auricle right auricle then it's moved out to it's moved further to right ventricle it's moved further to right ventricle then deoxygenated blood is pumped out from right ventricle through pulmonary artery so from right ventricle it is pumped out to the lungs where it is carried to the lungs but still it's passing from the right ventricle through pulmonary artery can you see this blue color tube blue color tube this is nothing but the pulmonary artery pulmonary artery so when it is entering in the blood will be deoxygenated blood clear then when it is passed through the pulmonary artery automatically it will be transferred to oxygenated blood listen deoxygenation blood is pumped out from right ventricle through pulmonary artery and taken to the lungs now what is happening here this deoxygenated blood is carried from the uh, right ventricle to the lungs through the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary artery so once again this pulmonary artery will carry the deoxygenated blood clear children yes so it's carry to the lungs what for they are carrying they are carrying for oxygenation so that this deoxygenated blood will be transferred to the oxygenated blood by the lungs by the lungs clear then the left auricle at the same time receives oxygenated blood so as this right auricle receives deoxygenated blood this left auricle you can see here is it not this left auricle will receive oxygenated blood what it will do it will receive oxygenated blood from the lungs from where from the lungs is that clear children so when the blood is passed into the lungs it is in a form of a deoxygenated form then when it is coming out from the lungs then the blood is oxygenated the carbon dioxide is removed and it is made oxygen rich this oxygen rich blood is said to be as oxygenated blood so from the lungs when it is coming out it's transferred to oxygenated blood clear children the left auricle at the same time receives here this part it receives oxygenated blood from the lungs from where it's from it's taken from the lungs oxygenated blood they are taking they are taking from the lungs through 
pulmonary vein through which they are carrying the oxygenated blood pulmonary vein clear children once again i am repeating this point pulmonary artery will carry deoxygenated blood and pulmonary vein will carry oxygenated blood clear children yes yes children now this left auricle will have oxygenated blood is it not yes the blood from the auricle moves to the respective ventricle that is left auricle the blood in the left auricle will move to left ventricle through the valve through the valve okay once the ventricles are filled with blood the valve will close so when it is filled with oxygenated blood automatically the valve will close when it is filled the valve will close so when when it will come out when the heart contracts when the heart is getting contracted automatically oxygenated blood from the left ventricle it is filled in the left ventricle is it not so when the heart contracts oxygenated blood from left ventricle is pumped to different parts of the body so so when it is getting contracted automatically oxygenated blood is coming out from the left ventricle to different parts of the body the aorta is the largest blood vessel in our body where is this aorta this what this red color this aorta is the largest blood vessel in our body clear children so this is what functioning of heart yes children now you can see two glass of water this is filled with less amount of water and another glass this is nothing but the sugar solution sugar solution okay so now i have mixed some sugar with water distil water so this is sugar solution now i am having two potatoes okay these two potatoes are peeled they are removed we have removed the peel okay and then i have made with the help of knife i have made a center a deep cavity can you see this yes then you should fill the cavity with some amount of sugar solution sugar solution with some amount of sugar solution clear not much less amount then what we are going to do we are going to place this potato inside the sugar solution it should not come out this water should water in the bowl should not come out carefully you have to place okay now we have kept then it should be set aside for 2 hours let us notice the result after 2 hours clear children yes yes children now you can notice the result where inside the potato the sugar solution sugar solution level of the sugar solution has been increased has been increased so what happens in which way it is related to osmosis osmosis is nothing but the solution is passed through a semi permeable membrane okay so here lower concentration membrane is water and higher concentration membrane is sugar solution okay so water is moving from higher lower concentration to the higher concentration through a semi permeable membrane that is your potato so after 2 hours water has been diffused inside the potato which means that water is moving from the uh, from the glass to the potato through this membrane can you all see yes so this is what about osmosis
Yes, children. Now, an activity for you all. What is that? What you are going to do? Take some amount of water in a beaker. Okay. Take a bowl. Fill it with some amount of water. Then, add few drops of either red ink or blue ink. So, the water will be turned to red color or blue color. Okay. Then, place the twig. Take separately a plant. Okay. With the roots root system should be there take a plant and then place the twig in water which water this colored water okay then leave it for one hour you can even notice the result after two days okay one day or two days it may vary then you can see either red or blue color in the different plant parts like leaves stem even in flowers you can observe the color change it is it means that it is transported which one is transported the red color or blue color water is transported from roots to all parts of the plant so it is carried by the roots to different parts of the plant okay so that we can that is externally visible we can see also the color change the color denotes that it has been transported from the roots to different parts of the body provided you should have a plant which has a proper root system okay so try this activity and notice the result and submit it in your class email id yes children now about heartbeat and pulse what do you mean by heartbeat we have learned so many times that heart will pump blood is it not it will pump blood by doing a mechanism said to be as contraction and relaxation contraction and relaxation is it not yes now the heart pumps blood due to the rhythmic contraction and relaxation due to the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the chambers so average on average it will just do 70 to 72 times per minute this heartbeat will happen for one minute approximately 70 to 72 times it will beat okay this rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the heart is said to be as heartbeat the contraction and relaxation of the heart is said to be as heartbeat clear children yes now what do you mean by pulse when arteries given away sorry when arteries give away blood to the body organs they ease and relax so when this when the blood is pumped out automatically they feel ease and relax this throbbing sensation is said to be as pulse clear children yes so this is what about heartbeat and pulse yes children now let us learn about the next concept that is excretion okay so what do you mean by excretion excretion is the process of removal of metabolic waste from body okay removal of metabolic waste from body so what is this waste metabolic waste waste are generated as a result of various activities as a result of various activities so many mechanisms are going in our body is it not like respiration digestion so many things are going on now so as a result of all these activities metabolic waste will be generated for example carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the waste which is generated during respiration is it not then undigested food sweat and urea all these are metabolic waste that is generated during some process like respiration digestion so many okay but these metabolic waste are produced okay 
then excretion in animals excretion in animals in fishes excretion takes place through gills and kidneys where gills and kidneys the organism remove nitrogenous waste what it will do it will remove the waste nitrogenous waste that is ammonia that type of organism is said to be as ammonotelic organism ammonotelic organism clear then some organisms like insects reptiles and birds that will excrete nitrogenous waste what it will do that will excrete nitrogenous waste in the form of uric acid in the form of uric acid and that is said to be as uricotelic organism uricotelic organism then some organisms like human and other mammals what it will do it will excrete urea as major nitrogenous waste and that organism is said to be as ureotelic organism ureotelic organisms okay so now let us learn about how this excretion is taking place in humans in humans different form of waste products are eliminated from body by different mechanism so different mechanisms are carried out where it is generating and releasing out the metabolic waste so what are the different steps how it is taking place first one by means of ejection okay so what do you mean by this ejection ejection is nothing but a process in short it is a process where solid digested waste is collected in the large intestine is collected in the large intestine that waste will be expelled through anus that waste will be expelled through anus in the form of feces in the form of feces clear children yes yes children now the next process is exhalation what is this a process in which gaseous waste such as carbon dioxide and excess water vapor or expel through the lungs what happened here gaseous waste such as carbon dioxide and some water vapor that is removed or expelled through the lungs through the lungs that process is said to be as exhalation clear children yes now the next thing is about sweating sweating what is this it helps to expel or excrete water it helps to excrete water small amount of urea and salt through sweat glands in the skin clear children yes next process is excretion what do you mean by this this is nothing but a process of eliminating toxic nitrogenous waste from the body where we are removing the nitrogenous waste from the body that process is said to be as excretion clear children yes now the next concept is about kidneys what do you mean by this kidney it's nothing but the structure of the kidney has a pair a pair of bean shaped organs a pair of bean shaped organs which is reddish brown in color how it will be reddish brown in color it is located on either side of the vertebral column where either side of the vertebral column then it consists of large number of coil tubes it has mainly large number of coil tubes said to be as nephrons what is that nephrons so what is this nephrons they are the functional units of kidney kidney functional unit is nothing but nephron 
okay so let us learn about this kidney structure in detail yes children now let us learn about human excretory system so what is this you can see the structure of human excretory system you can see a pair of kidneys is it not left and right kidney then you can see a tube like structure a tube like structure what is this so this structure is said to be as ureter ureter okay then you can see a muscular bag like structure it's said to be as urinary bladder urinary bladder and here this opening nearby it's said to be as urethra urethra okay so this is what about the structure of human excretory system now let us learn about that about ureter as i said this tube like structure is ureter this is nothing but the pair of tube like structure two things are there is it not so a pair of two tube like structures tube like structures that connect the kidneys to the urinary bladder so kidney and urinary bladder is connected by this tube the tube is said to be as ureter so then about urinary bladder what is this it is a large elastic muscular bag okay it seems to be as a large elastic muscular bag which helps in storing liquid waste in the form of urine okay so it helps us store urine here then next part urethra what do you mean by this urethra urethra is connected to urinary bladder on one side so one side is connected by the urinary bladder on the other side it helps in passing out urine so the other side the other side of the opening urine will be let out okay it will be passed out then next part is nephron what is this nephron nephron or nothing but the filtering units of urine urinary system filtering units of urinary system which filters excess salt urea and water so these things will be filtered and removed out by this functional unit said to be as nephrons clear children yes next thing is about artificial kidney or dialyzing machine dialyzing machine so what is this purpose so when our normal kidney is not functioning properly that will be transplanted by artificial kidney or they will also fix dialyzing machine what is this they are used to maintain normal level of water and minerals so all these things are used to maintain normal level of water and minerals in our body so in in which way it is contributing it is helping here so it is used to clean it is used to clean the blood of which has metabolic waste so the blood is purified by this dialyzing machine or artificial kidney and the process of purifying the blood is said to be as dialysis clear children yes now children for the movement of substances in the plant they are having vascular system this vascular system has further two main parts said to be as xylem and phloem okay so what do you mean by xylem a tissue which carries minerals and water from roots to other parts of the plant so water is absorbed by the root system is it not and then it's further carry to all parts of the plant with the help of the xylem clear yes next thing is about phloem what do you mean by this it's basically long tubes else it is also said to be as sieve tubes or phloem tubes clear then the purpose of this tube is to transport food from leaves to other 
parts of the body so food is prepared in leaves is it not so from the leaves the food has been transported to other parts of the body and that process is said to be as translocation clear children yes next thing is about transpiration what do you mean by transpiration it's a process by which plant lose water in the form of water vapor okay so water is getting evaporated here what has been lost from the plant in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts like stomata clear so this process is said to be as transpiration clear children yes next thing is about wilting wilting what do you mean by wilting plants lose excess water when the rate of transpiration is more so plant is losing here excess water more than what it is absorbing it is losing more amount of water clear then what happens the leaves as a result leaves flowers and stem of the plant will droop once again as a result of this excess water has been evaporated or it has been lost from the plant leaves flowers and stem of the plant will droop and this process is said to be as wilting wilting clear children yes water is absorbed by the roots through a process said to be as osmosis osmosis once again water is absorbed by the roots through a process osmosis clear children yes now about osmosis the process of transfer of water molecules through a semi permeable membrane as we learn from that activity water is moved from the uh, higher from the lower concentration to the higher concentration is it not so that's what here the area water is moved from the area more amount of water molecules to the area less of less number of the water molecules water is carried from more amount of water molecules to the less amount of water molecules clear so this is what about osmosis next thing is about transportation of food this is the last part of this chapter transportation of food so how it has been transported food manufactured in leaves is it not photosynthesis is taking place in leaves so food is manufactured in leaves now from the leaves it has to be transported to all parts of the plant so it is transported to all other parts with the help of flower tissue the help of flower tissue clear then translocation this translocation can occur in both direction that is transport of food it can occur in both direction upward and downward clear children then in uh, other thing next mechanism that is movement of water this water movement will takes place only in upward direction through xylem through xylem water movement will takes place only in the upward direction through the xylem clear children yes next thing is about translocation this translocation or transport of food is taking place through sieve tubes sieve tubes or flower tubes what is this they are placed one above the other this phloem or sieve tubes are placed one above the other it seems to be as a long straw like structure okay one above the other and it forms long tubes then it is used here to transport the food from the leaf to other parts of the body clear so this is what about transportation of food yes children yes so children with this we have come to an end of this chapter after watching the video read the chapter thoroughly so that you can understand well clear children
yes now let us meet in the next class